So after you check it out, we go to dig it out. Somebody say dig it out. Yeah. Now you've read it twice by this time. <clears throat> it's time to look at what you read. So on dig it out, we say, what is the theme? What is the theme? You know, these writers didn't have ADD. They weren't going, but sometimes it seems like it. So you got to read it and say, God, this seems scattered. I'm not even sure what we're talking about. You got to keep working through it. Wrestle with it. Somebody say wrestle with it. Wrestle with it. If they say one word 14 times in that passage, 1 Corinthians 13 says, love is patient, love is kind, love is, love is, love is. What's the theme? Love. You got it. You're catching on. So repeated words or phrases. If Paul says, I would not have you be ignorant about spiritual gifts, my brethren. And then he takes three or four chapters talking about spiritual gifts. Guess what? That was the theme. So when you're reading that passage, be careful you don't try to form all these heavy beliefs about, oh, I believe you're, uh, you know, you're supposed to eat vegetables or not eat vegetables. Or, no, he was talking about make sure you understand what was even the main topic. We start just throwing things out of context. Somebody say context. Are there any big words? Guess what? There will be, especially depending on which version of the Bible you have. I encourage you, if you're new to the Bible, get you an NLT. It's a great, that's just a suggestion. Or an ESV, or, you know, or the Rick James version. No, don't get that. Uh, but get something you can understand. And then eventually you may land into a New American Standard or a New King James, but start out with words you can comprehend. But just know you're going to have to not be lazy. Yeah. I mean, if God wrote it, it's worth looking a word up. Amen. Thank you. Look them up. I, I say always look, expect there to be two words at least that you don't know what they mean. Amen. Look them up. Write it down. Now, we're looking for commandments. Did he say, do such and such in this passage? If he said a commandment, then it would be good for you to write that down and say, oh, that, that sounded like he was pretty serious. Now, was that commandment just to who he was writing it to? Or does it, I mean, there's more study there. And was that commandment, um, <clears throat> did it have any conditions? Like promises. If you see a promise in the Bible, oh, I like promises, don't you? Yeah. Unless he says, I promise to throw people in the lake of fire. I'm, oh, whoa, hold on now. Um, but I like promises, but you need to know, are they conditional promises or conditional or unconditional? Like, if I said, you know, Mason, if you take out the trash today, I'm going to give you $20. Well, is that guaranteed? No. It's conditional, right? And I'm not saying that, Mason. So, <laughs> <laughs> but if I did, that's a conditional promise. If, then... Or I might just say, I'm giving everybody in here $20 a day. Chris would be like, doubt it. You know. Yeah. All right. So are there any warnings? Be careful of the so-and-so. Watch out for the yada yada. Those are warnings. If the Bible warns you, you might want to pay attention. Amen. Yep. And look for significant phrases. Like if it says, therefore, or if, or then, or there's, there's other phrases. But you've got to learn to watch out for these big words that mean, uh-oh, I better look around. 